minimum uh, for 10. Okay, and what is that state minimum? Uh, it's 50%. Okay. Uh, and then I think you have to be able to look through the tent and then see at least 50% of what's behind the tent. 50% of the light has to be able to travel through the window. Well, all right, that's another way to put it. Okay. Um, and which windows were tinted here? All the windows were tinted, but the windows that the state requires uh, regulation are on the front, uh, driver on the front passenger window. And so as you observe these vehicles, did you observe those two windows you've just described as having this excessive tent? Yes. Okay. Having made that observation and with your training experience in observing this, what did you do at that point? Uh, the observation, we had enough reason to make a traffic stop in the vehicle. Okay. And so how did you proceed? Um, Officer Carter was driving, so he initiated the uh, overhead emergency lights to signal a traffic stop, which occurred near Ferguson and Graham. And what did you do upon making that traffic stop? I made contact on the uh, passenger side, or still on the passenger side of Officer Carter, of course, I made contact with Mr. Owens on the driver's side. Okay. And as you were proceeding here to this traffic stop, did you observe the defendant driving on a public highway or private road? Yes, it was a public uh, road. Okay, private road. And uh, as you uh, made the traffic stop, did he stop when you requested? Yes. Okay, what happened next? Uh, Officer Carter approached, um, introduced himself, explained the reason for the stop while I stood on the passenger side. Okay, and as you approached the vehicle, did your impressions of the window tent change at that time? No. Okay, and what, what could you say to us about how that window tent appeared at that point? The tent was still dark, too dark to identify him from the passenger side. Um, you can see a silhouette. Um, the tent was even dark enough that upon an initial approach, a child wasn't even seen in the back seat or couldn't be seen in the back seat. Okay. Um, after observing this and uh, making initial contact with the driver, what did you do next? We returned to our cruiser. Um, I began to get our tent meter out, test it to make sure that it's working appropriately. Okay. And how do you do that? The meter comes with two uh, tinted glass um, plates that you put into the meter. Uh, each glass plate has a specific uh, percentage that that plate is supposed to measure at. The meter is allowed to measure within plus or minus two percent of that glass plate. Okay. And so you checked in this instance to see if the meter was operating properly? Yes. Did you find the meter was operating properly on this occasion? Yes, I did. Okay. And after you um, tested the meter to make sure it's operating properly, uh, what did you do? I returned to the passenger side, asked Mr. Olsen to roll the window down to measure the tent. The passenger side window measured at 20%, at which point I then noticed a uh, child in the back seat. Okay. When you indicated you saw a child in the back, well, let's back up the window tent first. You indicated the window tent measured at 20%? Yes. And how, do, how does that uh, equate to what the legal standards required to measure? The uh, legal standard says 50% or above, so 20% is well below the um, standard. You indicated as you approached the vehicle, you then observed a child. Yes. And where is that child at when you observed them? In the back seat laying down. Okay. And was the child in a child safety seat? No. Okay. Were they in any type of restraint that you recall? Uh, not that I recall, but there was not any child restraint device. Okay. And did you inquire as to the age of the child? Yes. And what did Mr. Owensby indicate with regard to that? Say the child was three years of age. And what is the requirements with regard to a child safety seat for a child three years of age? Uh, they must be in a child restraint, any child under the age of four or 40 pounds. Okay. And so in this case, the child was not properly restrained? Correct. Okay. And this uh, window tent violation, were you able to capture some of that on your body cam video? Yes. And is it a fair and accurate depiction of what occurred regarding the window tent? Yes. And um, you had a chance to review this beforehand? Yes. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, I believe that we are agreeing in State's Exhibit Number 1, is that correct? Yeah, yes. Any objection by the defense to playing uh, the portion where the stop was made regarding the tinted windows? No objection, Judge. All right. Thank you, Attorney Smith. All right, you may uh, proceed to play it. Thank you.
video assignment indicate about the child being three years of age and acknowledge he's not in the car seat. Correct. Okay. Uh, all these things that you described here today, this all happened in the city of Dayton, kind of Montgomery, state of Ohio? Yes. No further, no further questions. Uh, what, um, what training have they had in the uh, light transmittance meter to use it? So we're trained how to operate it, um, again, to make sure to perform a test before each operation or before you perform on each vehicle uh, by using those tinted glass plates that you saw in the video. Um, it's a real simple um, device to use when coming to testing. We only really have two different kinds. We have that one that slides in the window, and we have one that breaks apart for measuring windshields or windows where the tent doesn't come all the way to the top. And how many times do you think you utilize this particular meter to check the tint on the window? Ballpark, ballpark. Hundreds of times within a, a month. Yeah, and how long have you been in office? Five and a half years. Okay, all right. Hey, thank you, sir. Uh, Attorney Willis, do you have any questions? Attorney Smith, any questions? I have a few, Your Honor. Thank you. I know you just had surgery, so if you want, need to sit down, it's okay. No, I'm all right. I okay. prefer to stay if you don't mind. How'd you pronounce your name, sir? Wayne Hammock. Thank you. So let me ask you, how long have you been a police officer? Five and a half years. Were you trained to be one? Yes. How much training did you get? It's uh, six months at the Dayton Police Academy. All right. Now, on this particular day, you saw the, the car the defendant was driving, right? Yes. Was it moving when you first saw it? Yes. Had you ever seen that car before? No. And how far did you follow the car before you signaled it to pull over? Four or five blocks. And did he pull over without incident? Yes. You asked for his credentials? Officer Carter did, yes. Yes. And were they surrendered? Yes. Were you inside the car or outside the car when the credentials were given to your partner? I was standing on the passenger side of the car. Right. So when you were standing on the driver's side, you were able to look around in the car. You didn't see anything suspicious in there, did you? 
I was standing on the passenger side and my view was obstructed by the okay. tenant windows. But did you ever look around in the car to see if you've seen any weapons in plain view or anything like that? To the best of my ability, I tried to, yes. You did that? I, I attempted to, Right. Yes. You routinely do that, don't you? Yes. Right. And you didn't see anything? From my standpoint, it was hard to see into the vehicle, but from what I could see, no. Right. You didn't see anything that, that caused you to fear that he was armed and dangerous, did you? From my standpoint, I was unable to see anything like that. Right. Had you ever seen this man before? Yes, I, I have. Did you know him? I didn't know him um, from Ralph. The, from the beginning, I later found out that I had an encounter with him before. Well, when you saw him that particular day, did you, did you recall whether or not you knew him or not? No, I, I did not recall right at that moment that I had a prior incident with him. Well, after he surrendered his documents, did you look at them? No, I did not. What happened to them? Officer Carter had them. Did your partner take them back to, and make a call in to the dispatch to determine who the, this person was and get his resume? No, that's not how it works. Was that done? It was ran through our computer. We don't call in the dispatch. How much time did that take? Well, you notice Officer Carter running in on the video. It takes a matter of seconds. Yes. And uh, once you got the report back, uh, did, did you or your partner commence writing the ticket? Yes, Officer Carter did. Who was doing that, you or your partner? Officer Carter was writing the ticket. I'm sorry. And did he complete his task? Um, at some point before the incident was over, the, the task was completed. Yes. And once the task was complete, he was good to go, wasn't he? No, because Officer Carter hadn't finished the ticket prior to the K-9 arriving. Well, I just asked you about was the task of writing the ticket complete, and you indicated yes, didn't you? I answered that by the time the incident was over, the task was completed. I didn't tell you that it was completed at that moment. By the time what incident was over? The entire incident. Oh, in other words, the task of writing the ticket was not complete before he was asked to get out of the car? Yeah, I'm going to object. It's been asked and answered. Uh, overall, I think you can clarify. Go ahead. The ticket was not completed by the time the K-9 arrived on scene. Okay. Well, you, you, do, you are aware that once the task of writing the ticket is complete, that is the writing part. Objection, Your Honor. They should, those tickets should be given to the, to the, to the driver, don't you? you understand that, oh. don't you? Did you get that? Did you understand? No, I, I don't understand your question. Okay. The purpose of the stop was to investigate traffic, apparent traffic violations, correct? The purpose of the stop was for a equipment violation. Okay. Well, you, you were investigating whether or not the windows were illegally tinted. You observed the kid on the back seat and you recognize that too was a violation, so you're going to write two tickets, you and your partner. And the task of writing that it those tickets was assigned to your partner, right? Yes. Right. And how long does it take to write a ticket in Dayton? Uh, it's a handwritten ticket. It takes about seven, seven to nine minutes or so. Seven and a half minutes to write a ticket? It's a handwritten ticket. It takes about seven to nine minutes. Okay. And that's the full investigation when it comes to window tent, right. from measuring the window tent to handwriting the ticket. How many minutes had it elapsed before someone went to the side of the door and asked him to turn the engine off? How many minutes from the time he, the car was stopped until that event occurred? That, I don't know. Huh? I don't know. You don't know? You have to watch the video. You've watched it many times, haven't you? Well, I have, but I didn't watch and determine the time from the ticket starting and the time he was asked to get out of the car. That hasn't been discussed by the police officers? It hasn't been discussed with me, no. No one discussed with you why it took so long? Yeah, and no, I'm going to object. It's been asked and answered. Okay, yes, thank yeah, you, Judge. argue with the witness to say. Thank you. So, but the reality is you are telling me that the writing of the ticket had not been completed before someone asked him to turn the engine off. Okay, uh, Your Honor, I'm going to object as to relevance, and it's asked and answered. Okay, and answer it one more time. The ticket was not complete prior to being asked due to the fact the K-9 was there and we did not prolong the stop. Why was the K-9 there? 
Objection, Your Honor, relevance. Okay, that's, yeah, that's where we were. Uh, that's where he was getting to, and he finally got to Well, that. I'll withdraw that question. I'll ask this one so it'll be a little more distinct. Who sent for the canine? Objection, Your Honor, relevance. Overall, I'm going to let some, allow some leeway. Look, I, I do want to emphasize we're here for the traffic, two traffic offenses, and some of the circumstances surrounding it before and a little bit after. I'm going to let Mr. Willows have some, a little leeway, but in terms of this court's duty, I'm only charged with is he guilty of the um, uh, minor misdemeanors, uh, and in terms of you know, whether or not excessive force was used, uh, that's for another day in the court. I'm not going to ask you anything about excessive force. Okay, I'll give you a little leeway. Thank you, Judge. My question to you, sir, is this. Was the dog sent for before the writing of the ticket was completed? Yes, you can hear me on video call for a canine. Who called in for the dog? I did. Why did you call in for the dog? Because of the area that we were in. Because of what? The high crime and drug area that we were in. I requested a canine. In other words, anytime you stop someone in a high drug area, you, know, you feel you can call them in for the I'm dog. I'm allowed to understand you have a continuing objection. Uh, I, I'm objecting, Your Honor, because it's asking him to speculate and asking about cases not concerned before the court here today, how he acts in another case. Withdraw the question, Your Honor. Right, very good. Thank you. Who determines this a high drug area? You? Or is it written somewhere where I can go read it? Yeah, there's a collection of stats that you can look up that will show you the number of violent and drug crimes that occur in this area. And, and uh, so you're saying it's written somewhere in, in, in the, in the, with the police department on a document that you read that designated that area as a high drug area. Yeah, I'm object to a really compound question. Uh, it is compound. I think he has answered, but based Thank on you, the Judge. data, it, it was a high crime. Did you have arrested anybody in that area for drugs? Yes, I've arrested several people for drugs and guns in that area. When? Objection on irrelevance. All right, one last question. Go ahead and answer that question. On a regular basis. What does that mean, regular that basis? My job was to I'm not asking about your job. I'm asking the definition yeah. of regular basis. I'm going to object to the badgering of the witness. He asked him a question, and then he interrupted his answer. I would also object to the relevance of the question. Yeah, all right. Um, Thank you, Judge. When you say you lock, you you lock people up on a regular basis. Does that mean every day? Every day I do arrest people for drugs and guns. That's the that's the objective of the spot that I was in during this incident. Every day in that area you arrest people for drugs. No, every day. That's what I do. My purpose and my job for the spot that I was in is focused on gun and drug crimes. How many people did you arrest yesterday? Objection on irrelevance. It's sustained. So you, you would average, I take it, at least seven arrests a week. I'm sorry. I'm at five days, a, five arrests a week. Okay, sustained. I have given you quite a lot. Uh, th thank you, Judge. I've learned a lot from it. I have no further questions. Uh, thank you, Attorney uh, Do you have any uh, additional uh, uh, redirect questions? No, I don't, Your Honor. Oh, I'm sorry, Judge. I'm sorry. I have one other question. You almost made it. Okay, go ahead. Did the defendant open the door voluntarily after he was asked to open the door? I have objectives to the relevance with regard to this. Oh, all right. You can answer this if you know. I opened the door. Okay. Did anyone ever ask you why did you do beat up on that man? Objection. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, clearly, stricken. that's out of uh, order. The court Thank you, Judge. To, uh, strike no that further question questions. From the all right. You certainly may step down. Thank you. Thank you.
Does the city have another witness? If I could have just a moment, Your Honor. Yes. For the admission of state's exhibit number one. That is a uh, copy of the uh, tape that was played in court. Any objections to it being admitted? No objection, Your Honor. It, it will be admitted, thank you. Anything else? State with rest, Your Honor. All right, very well. The uh, state has rested its evidence. Does the defendant have uh, any evidence that we, you wish to offer at this point? No, Judge. All right. Uh, when we uh, uh, first started this case, uh, the court had made a statement. I am only here today as a visiting judge to decide whether or not the state or the city has proven beyond a reasonable doubt the elements of the offenses that the defendant uh, is charged, even though they're minor misdemeanors, the beyond reasonable doubt standard is applicable, whether it's a murder case or it's a traffic case. In any event, after hearing the um, evidence in this case, the court finds that uh, Clifford Owensley is guilty of both of the offense of driving a vehicle with tinted windows and also failing to have a proper child restraint seat in the uh, back seat. And I said both of these are minor misdemeanors. Uh, prior to the court sentencing, is there anything either the state or the defendant wants to say? No, thank you, Your Honor. Anything you want to say? We don't have anything, Your Honor. All right, does uh, the defense, uh, Mr. Owens, do you want to say anything? Is that a yes or a no? I wish to exercise my right to remain silent. Okay, well, we're not in the testimony uh, portion here. Um, I did review um, your record uh, prior to coming in here today. This is not the first time you've been stopped for driving with tinted windows. Um, and um, I would have thought after the first time that you got stopped that you wouldn't tint your windows anymore, but um, apparently that's not the case. All right, in reference to the tinted window uh, charge, the court's gonna fine you $150, which is the maximum possible sentence. All right, now you wanna say something? regards to what what you said to me after I so already spoke um, you said something about you thought that I would learn my lesson um, by tinted windows already um, well once you got stopped for having tinted windows you know let me get out the uh, let me get out the record here the prior criminal record which is uh, lengthy uh, not the worst I've ever seen it's certainly not the best <coughs> prior criminal record I've ever seen but you've got uh, 2006. Looks like 2006 you were stopped. Uh, and then of course you have other convictions for drug related offenses in 2015, 2019. So what do you wanna say about not? Uh, I have nothing else to say if it doesn't regard the traffic stop. I'm, I'm totally through with it. Thank you. Okay, all right, very well. Uh, the state also finds that the tri uh, child restraint <coughs> law was violated in reference to this toddler, uh, which is of uh, <coughs> a serious safety concern, even though I understand you were saying you only went for a short period. Uh, <coughs> a lot of things can happen in a short period of time regarding an accident. The court's also going to find you $150 for that uh, minor misdemeanor. All right, that concludes these proceedings. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Judge.